Welcome back to Mideast In-Depth. Today we shall be looking at the advance of ISIS on Syria's Kurds and what it means for Turkey and the PKK. Amberin Zaman comments in Al Monitor as Islamic State fighters keep up their battle to gain control over Kobani, the effects of the conflict are being felt in Turkey itself. She begins by addressing the current violence in the area and states that thousands of Kurds have protested Turkey's inaction against IS's seemingly unstoppable advance. The government slapped curfews on six provinces in the mainly Kurdish region after clashes between protesters and the security forces and between rival Kurdish groups left at least 14 people dead. She adds many Kurds continue to believe that Turkey is complicit in the jihadists' onslaught against Kobani, even though Turkey denies it is siding with IS. Zaman continues, but it is doing little to aid the Kurds. This in turn invites the question of whether Turkey sees the Kurds as a greater threat than the jihadists, who stand to grab their third border crossing with Turkey. She explores the issue further by saying Turkey's inaction over Kobani is undermining the peace process. Erdogan's hopes of winning Kurdish support for constitutional amendments that would boost his presidential powers hang on friendships with, friendship with the Kurds. A breakdown of the PKK's 18-month-long ceasefire would likely jeopardize his ruling AKP's chances in nationwide parliamentary elections scheduled for June. None of this appears to phase the Ankara government. This is because Erdogan and his AKP disciples view Kobani as an opportunity rather than a threat. She concludes the opportunity ought to be to, be to win the hearts and minds of Turkey's Kurds by riding to their rescue of their brethren in Syria. Instead, Erdogan has chosen to exploit Kobani's imminent fall to wrest maximum concessions from assorted Kurdish leaders. Hugh Pope in The Guardian warns that the advance of ISIS on Syria's Kurds is undermining the peace process between Turkey and the PKK. He admits a tragedy has indeed engulfed Kobani, but the hard truth is that the Syrian Kurds and their main democratic party, the PYD, militia, were always vulnerable and ultimately unable to defend Kobani alone. He continues that Turkey is not free to drive its tanks down to the hill to save Kobani, as demanded by Turkish Kurd politicians. Breaking international law by crossing a border would weaken Turkey's international position, set off angry regional reactions from backers of Damascus, such as Iran and Lebanon's Hezbollah, and could lead to Syria itself firing missiles at Turkish cities. He explains, Turkish action around Kobani would also mean armed confrontation between Turkey and ISIS. The Turkish armed forces are absolutely unprepared for any long-term foreign operation. With its porous 570-mile-long Syrian border, Turkey has everything to lose in such an open-ended conflict. He adds, the Turkish government and the Kurdish national movement should therefore discuss what they can do themselves, not what they would like others to do. And he suggests they, the only way to make this partnership happen is to complete the peace process fitfully underway since 2005. All the necessary elements are in place for a breakthrough to end a 30-year conflict that has already killed 30,000 people. However, he concedes neither side trusts each other yet. Ankara sometimes seems to be regally granting small concessions to the Kurds and resenting legitimate demands, and the PKK finds it very hard to commit publicly as it must to eventual disarmament within Turkey. Pope concludes, whatever happens to Kobani, it is only by sorting Turkish and Kurdish differences inside Turkey that the two sides can begin thinking the unthinkable about facing ISIS together. For more updates, please visit levant.tv. And subscribe to Mideast in-depth on iTunes. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.